Hi, I'm Kevin Mansell from Control F, and welcome to the second part of our two-part number systems tutorial. In this video, we're going to be introducing and explaining the hexadecimal number system, also known as HEX, and teaching you how to convert a hexadecimal number into its decimal equivalent. But before we get started properly, let's get one thing straight. If this is the first time you've encountered hexadecimal, it's going to seem pretty weird. Truth be told, it remains a bit weird for some time after that. But if you're working with computers at a technical level, taking the time to understand hexadecimal is time well spent. In our part one video, we learned that decimal is a base 10 number system. We have 10 different digits that we can use, zero to nine, of course. Binary is a base two number system. Any number represented in binary consists only of zeros or ones. Those are the only digits available to use. Hexadecimal is a base 16 number system. In other words, each digit can take one of 16 possible values. The way in which we represent numbers in hexadecimal is to use the digits 0 to 9, just like in decimal, but supplement them with the first six letters of the English alphabet, A to F. I did tell you that hexadecimal was a bit weird. Once we know that hexadecimal is a base 16 number system, we can work out what the place value for each digit in a hexadecimal number will be. If this gets confusing, check out our part one video where we explain place values for decimal and binary numbers. The place value for our rightmost digit in any number system is the number base raised to the power zero, which is always equal to one. Our next digit to the left will have a place value of the base, in this case 16, raised to the power one. In other words, 16. Our next digit will have a place value of 16 raised to the power two. In other words, 16 squared or 16 times 16. Those of you who are hot on your 16 times table will know that 16 squared is 256. And to finish off for now, our next digit will have a place value of 16 cubed, which is 4096. Whereas a three digit decimal number has place values of hundreds, tens, and ones for its respective digits, a three digit hexadecimal number has place values of 256s, 16s, and ones. Which means that we can represent large numbers in hexadecimal with less digits than decimal, and far, far fewer digits than if we represented the same number in binary. Let's take a moment to count up from one in hexadecimal. We're gonna start with single digit hexadecimal numbers and then see what happens when we transition into two digit hex numbers. In our simple table here, we have the decimal numbers one to 17 in the left hand column, and we're gonna be filling in the blanks with the hexadecimal equivalent in the right hand column. As we're doing this, let's keep in mind that the place values for a two digit hexadecimal number are 16s and ones. Just burn that image of a two by two grid with 16 and one across the top into your brain and you won't go too far wrong. The decimal number one represented in hex is just the same. It's a, a one in the rightmost column, our ones or units column. Now we'll pause here just for a moment to explain that there is a convention, or rather one of a number of conventions, which can be used to clarify that the number we've written is a hexadecimal number and not a decimal number. It's kind of irrelevant when we're dealing with small numbers like one, but let's get into good habits right from the start. When we have a hexadecimal number, we can either prefix it with 0x or alternatively add a suffix of lowercase h. This tells the person reading the number that they need to interpret the number as being hexadecimal. For instance, hexadecimal 32 is quite different from the decimal number 32. Okay, let's get back to counting up in hexadecimal. Decimal two represented in hex is, not surprisingly, two, and so on right through to nine at which point things start to get a little more interesting as we've run out of decimal digits. To represent decimal 10, we need two digits, a one and a zero. But remember, hexadecimal has another six digits we can use, so we can represent decimal 10 with a single hex digit, and that digit is A. A in hexadecimal is used to represent decimal 10. Now, I know it sounds wrong to talk about the digit A, and it seems weird using letters to count, but just go with it. It gets less weird the more you work with it. Trust me. Okay, 
So now we need to represent decimal 11 in hex, and it won't surprise you to know that we use B to do that. C is 12, D is 13, E is 14, and then finally F is used to represent 50. At which point, we've run out of hexadecimal digits we can use. We've used all 16 of them, right through from 0 to F. We've reached the point where we're going to need a two-digit hexadecimal number. The $64 million question, of course, is what those two digits are going to be. To figure that out, think back to that 2x2 two two grid I asked you to burn into your brain. We know that a two-digit hex number will have place values of 16s and 1s. So the question we're trying to answer is how many 16s and how many 1s do we need to represent decimal 16? Well, if we put a 1 in the 16s column and a 0 in the 1s column, let's look at how we'd convert that to decimal. We'd have 1 times 16 equals 16 and 0 times 1 equals 0. Add those two results together and we get 16. In other words, decimal 16 can be represented in hexadecimal by the two-digit number 10. Notice how I'm not calling this hexadecimal 10. The word 10 relates to decimal, just like 15, 80, and 1000 do. If we're working in hexadecimal, we should avoid confusion by steering clear of decimal words, so it's hexadecimal 10. OK, that was the tricky part. Now let's close out our counting up in hex by considering decimal 17. What combination of 16s and 1s would we need to make 17? I hope that you can see that the two-digit hex number 11 would give us 116 plus 11. In other words, 17 in total. Again, we say hexadecimal 11 and not hexadecimal 11. OK, so let's look at how we can convert a hexadecimal number into its decimal equivalent. We're going to convert a simple two-digit number, but you can apply the same method to numbers with more digits. Just make sure you have the correct place values. The first step is to place our hexadecimal number into a grid. In this case, we put our hex number 3C into a 2x2 two two grid. The three digit sits in our 16s column and the C in our 1s column. Just as we did with decimal and binary numbers in our part one video, we take each digit, multiply it by its place value, and then add up the results. Our calculation for the left-hand digit is quite straightforward. Three times 16 equals 48. But for our right-hand digit, we have C times one, the answer to which is less obvious. Things get a lot simpler when we swap C for its decimal equivalent, 12. Remember, A is 10, B is 11, C is 12. In other words, our equation becomes 12 times 1 equals 12. We now need to add the results from both of those multiplications to determine the decimal equivalent of hexadecimal 3C. 48 plus 12 equals 60. Now, try using the same process to convert the hex number on your screen and look in the comments for the answer. Hexadecimal seems confusing when you first encounter it, but don't be scared. Remember, the place values for each digit increases powers of 16 from right to left. 1, 16, 256, and so on. Hexadecimal A represents decimal 10, B represents 11, C 12, and so on. If you can remember those two things, you're more than halfway there when it comes to converting from hex to decimal. I hope we've helped Hex make sense. Do subscribe to our channel and keep an eye out for more tutorial videos in the future.